Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to make a map be generated randomly, so let's get started. So first let's save the old map, so old puzzle, and drag all of these pieces into there, and then drag it into the assets, and you can delete it from here, in, just in case you want to use it later. Okay, so now we have this empty scene, basically empty. And let's start on generating the random map. So, on the game manager, I'm first going to create here a public bool called generate random. So this is just a way for us to say that we want to generate a map or not, because if we don't want to generate a map, then the old code will run. But if you want to generate a map, then the new code will run. So, if we want to generate a map, if generate random, then we'll do some code here, else the old code will run. So we're going to put it until over here. So this is part of the old code. Uh, this we, are, we will also be using after we generate a random map, because of course we need to get the, the win value of the map and shuffle it. So now let's start generating the map. So first, uh, when we generate a map, I will make it so that you have to give the the size of the map. You can make also the size, the height and the width random, but I'm going to make it so, that's, so that you set it yourself. So first we have to make sure if the puzzle, that the puzzle dot width and height is not zero, so if this is equal to zero, or puzzle dot height is also equal to zero, then we, we say an error. This is just to prevent, this isn't actually needed. Debug.log error. Please set the dimensions. Like that. And then we can also pause the game. So debug.break. This will pause the game. The game. And with that done, then we want to generate a map. And I'm going to create a, a function here called generate puzzle and let's make it a void generate puzzle and also let's call it here generate puzzle so the first thing we have to do is to create a map just like we did here when we do puzzle dot pieces equals this we are going to do the exact same thing so I can actually copy it into here so that we create an array uh, to the array for that and now let me explain a bit on how this we will be generating a map so let's say that we have this map so we're going to generate the map from the left to right bottom to top you can do it in any other direction you can start from the middle if you want I'm just going to do it this way because I felt like it for instance in this corner you could either put a corner um, an end you can also you could also put here an end on this on a corner of the map or you could put the null piece here and then imagine that okay uh, it randomly put this this corner in here so what what piece can we put in this next spot so we can put also a corner we can put say an end we can also put this this freeway on the other direction and we can also of course also the line on a 19 degrees angle and that's that's basically it. We basically keep on generating the map, but we always have to fill some restrictions based on the pieces that we have already put in the map. So, on the generate puzzle, let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make loops, one loop that goes on the height and another one on the width. Again, I could also do a for each loop like I did in some of the other tutorials, but I'm going to do it this way, so for int height until it's smaller than the puzzle dot height and inside this loop do another loop for and this time for the width until it's smaller than the puzzle dot width oops like so okay now first 
like I said, we're going to have to add restrictions. So first of all, let's add the restrictions from the borders. If we are creating a piece that the width is zero, so if it's on on this line, the first line, then the left value of the piece, the zero, the zero, one, two, three, the three value has to be zero. So how can we specify that here? Well, I'm going to create an auxiliary variable that holds the values that the piece should have. So I'm going to create here int aux values and I can make it start with 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 1, 0 for each side, like that. Anyways, like I was saying, if the width is 0, then we want the value of the piece on the on the left, which is the free on the array, equal to zero. Else the aux values uh, free we have to be equal to the previous the value of the previous piece. Because like I said, we're we're generating a map from left to right. So imagine that we're generating this piece, then the the value from the left has to be one to match this piece over here. In this case of course in another case it will be something. In conclusion it has to follow the previous piece that was put. Aux values free is equal to the puzzle dot pieces and we want to get the piece that was to the left dot values and we want the value to be equal to the right which is the one just like that. Now this is to set the aux value free of the piece. Now there's also all the other values to set. So for instance if the the width the width of this piece is equal to puzzle dot width minus one. So if, if we are on the left side of the map, if we are in here, then of course we want the the aux value free of the piece. So we want the aux value uh, my bad the, the aux value one of the piece. So zero one the value on the right to be equal to zero. Else well, again, because I said that we're generating the map from the from the left to the right, the the value from the right will be randomly generated. That's one of the only places that we actually are uh, randomly generating a value. So aux values value from the right equal to a random range, and I'm going to set this between 0 and 2 because as you can see the, the first uh, value is inclusive but the second one is exclusive so th this will be either 0 or 1 okay these are the width restrictions let's move on to the height restrictions which will be very similar to this one okay so if the piece that we're currently generating dot height is 0 there is no piece below it so the value from the bottom should be 0. So aux values 0, 1, 2 equals 0. Else, well, else, again, because I, I said that we're generating from left to right, the bottom to top, the value from the bottom is not random. The value from the bottom, if we're not on the last line, the value from the bottom, for instance, the value from the bottom of this piece, which is this value over here, 1 has to be equal to the top value of the piece below. So, else, aux values 2 is equal, just like we did there on the top, puzzle, dot pieces, and we want to get the piece that's below it, so the width is the same and the height is minus 1, dot values, and has to be equal to the value on the top, so 0, just like that. Now, what if the piece is on the top of the level? If the height of this piece is equal to puzzle dot height minus one, so it's on the top line of the level, then of course we want the top value of the piece to be equal to zero. Else, well, else we also want to randomly generate this value. So just like we did there, aux values zero equals to random range. And just like we did there, 0 and 2, and that's done. Just like that, we, we set up the value for our piece. Now what we need to do is to discover, okay, 
we have set the values for the piece, the right, left, bottom and top values. Now, what piece does this correspond to? It's, that's pretty simple to discover. We just have to add all the values. So we create here uh, int value sum, which is which will be a sum of all of the values. So aux values zero. This could also be done with a loop. It might be uh, easier, but anyways, aux values two plus aux values three. And of course, this tells us piece type. Okay, imagine that this will be zero, then it's a null piece. If it's one, it's a piece that has one end. If it is three, it has three ends. There's only one issue, which is if it if it's two, if this sum is two, it can be either the line or the corner. Uh, if we, I'm going to put there an array on the top of the game objects of these prefabs, and on the position zero, I'll put the the thing that has no no exits on the position one. I'll put the end on the position two. I'll put either the line or the corner on the freeway, the freeway on the fourth, the cross, and on on the other one, either the line or the corner, one of them. So first, let's let me create that array. So here, public game object array, but piece prefabs, just like that. Save it. And of course we have a ton of errors. One of those is because I forgot to put here these brackets. So if I put those brackets, they're the brackets, everything is, is good. So now on Unity. Uh, let me also let me disable this again. On the manager. Now we can put here the piece prefabs. So let's open it for six prefabs. So on the 0, I'll put the null piece. On the 1, I'll put the end. On the element 2, I can either put the line or the, the, cor or the corner. I can put the line. On the 3, I'll put the freeway. On the 4th, I'll put the cross. And on the 5th, I can put the, the corner. OK. And now we have the prefabs set. And with this, we can now uh, quickly access those prefabs. So if the sum is 1, we get the, the exit, the one the end which has one exit, the piece is free, we get the freeway which has three exits. Now if the sum of the, the values is two, it can either be a corner or a line. And to untie this, we want to check if the value sum equals two. So if the, the sum of the values was two and the aux values uh, zero is different from the aux values 2 and what this the means is that if the value from the top is different from the value from the bottom then this is a corner because if the value is 2 in the line the value from the top is equal to the value of the bottom no matter the direction it is if it's like this it's 1 1 if it will be on 90 degrees it will be 0 0 but on the corner it's the opposite it's always different so this will tell us that it's a corner so if it's a corner we can set the value sum to, to be equal to 5. OK, now we have the values. I'm going to use to, this to instantiate the game object from the prefab that we just created. So piece prefabs, and we put here a value sum. And now you can understand why we put here a 5. This will get the corner from the fifth value of the manager. Now the position will be a, a new vector 2 vector free because this has to be a vector free and we're going to put here the the width the height of the current piece and zero and the rotation we can make it quaternion that identity okay now we have put the piece in in the place but as you can see here we gave it no rotation but we need to give it some rotation so that the next pieces will be generated randomly because we have to put the pieces in the right direction. Imagine that we put this, put this corner piece in its default uh, rotation. Well, then the puzzle would be wrong already. Because when we generate the top, it will be zero. But what we, we actually meant was for it to be one, like this. OK, to do that, we have to manipulate this game object. So I'm going to put here game object, geo. And I'm going to force this object that we just instantiated to be a game object. And just like that, now we can manipulate the game object. 
and to make this game object, uh, this piece rotate in the to the correct direction, all we have to do is a, a loop. So I'm going to make it a while, while the value of the piece. So uh, geo dot get component piece dot value zero is different from the value that we set from the aux value zero and we're going to do this for all the other values and the value one is also different and the value two is also different and the value three is also different and let me just put this like so so that you can read it better and let's change so the value one has also to be equal and the value two as well and the value three as well so while they are different then we want to rotate the piece so just do go geo dot get component piece just like we did in there dot rotate piece and this will rotate the piece until it is these conditions are all false oh and sorry you have to put here uh, an or because if any one of these values is wrong then we have to keep rotating the piece until we get the correct combination and okay we have this done we also have to of course set this to be a piece of the puzzle because we haven't set that yet puzzle.pieces width and height equals to this piece so equals to geo dot get component piece save and hopefully everything will be fine so let's go to unity I can do this old map set the on the manager set to be to generate random and let's set a, a width and the height I'm going to set it to be 4 by 4 for now and hopefully as you can see if everything is fine it works and now let's just see if we can actually complete this puzzle I believe we can so if I rotate all of the pieces into the correct positions time we can we want the puzzle and of course if I press next next level it will render generate another random puzzle and it will of course it always works and that's it for today guys I know that it was a bit of a code heavy episode but it had to be to make this generate a random map it had to be like that oh and by the way some maps have several solutions uh, this because this counts the number of connections and the for any solution the number of connections is always the same any solution will work uh, and finally this is the last tutorial from this series so I hope you enjoyed it if you want me to add anything extra to this series I don't know like have a map that's symmetric or a puzzle solver or something like that uh, let me know drop a like if you liked it thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial